Welcome to the Kick-Ass Couples Podcast. This is the place where we help committed couples who want to level up their marriage, experience newfound clarity, hope, and confidence. We're Matthew and Kim, co-hosts and husband and wife. In 26 years together, we've seen a lot and never thought it could be as good as it is right now. We're here to help you successfully navigate the messy, dirty, and wonderful world of marriage. We believe all couples deserve and are capable of experiencing an extraordinary and fulfilling marriage. And each week we're bringing you life lessons from real life successful couples to help you grow and strengthen your relationship. We'll get started right after this message. If you wanna learn how to experience the best, most fulfilling year of your marriage, we invite you to pre-order Matthew's new book, Kick-Ass Husband, Winning at Life, Marriage, and Sex. You can get it at MatthewPHoffman.com. Again, that's MatthewPHoffman.com. And now, back to the show. All right. Are you ready to talk about this show? I'm ready. I'm ready. I've You're been ready. ready. You've been ready? Okay. No, that's really not true, but... um. First of all, before we dig in, I just I want to say that I can't believe we're actually here right now doing this. It's been a long time in preparing, and um, I know this has been your baby for the last year, year and a half. Um, and I'm so proud of you and all of the work and time and energy and heart, real heart that you have put into um, doing this podcast. And I'm so excited to be sitting here next to you and um, we get to share this together um, and, you know, we're beginning a new journey and um, I'm really looking forward to it. So, oh, thank you. I, I'm excited, too. It seems, you know, there's been so much preparation for what we're getting into and just to be able to be sitting here talking with you about something that we're both so passionate about and, and what we're getting into. So I'm grateful, full of gratitude as I sit next here to my my number one the woman who uh, brought me to why I'm here. Really, that's you're the reason. Well, I think it's important to um, tell all of you why we're doing this, what it is that led us to to be here today. Absolutely. The Kick-Ass Couples podcast. The reason we're getting into this is because I think that my wife and I, Kim and I, have been able to experience such an amazing marriage and relationship. We've been together for over 26 years, married for 26 years, over 26 years. And in the last few years, we've really started to focus and pay attention and invest and work on this relationship. And I think that we're the happiest that we've ever been. And we really think that all couples deserve to have an incredible marriage and to be as happy as we are. And they're all able to do it. And that's really the reason why we're doing it is that we genuinely believe that couples do deserve and are very capable of having um, an amazing, extraordinary, fulfilling relationship. Absolutely. And I think and it's and it's I don't I think everybody wants to have that kind of relationship and they may have a different idea about what that looks like. But really, the problem that this podcast and our brand and everything that we're doing for couples, what we want to solve is really ignorance. And ignorance isn't a bad thing. It just means you you don't know. And we want to help plug those holes and give people what they need to learn on how to do it and how to get there. A toolbox, really, just a, a, a box of um, ideas and um, things that we can do in our marriage to keep it healthy and wholesome. Absolutely. And I think what's what's unique about what we're doing and how we're going to do it is we want to teach people how to prioritize uh, their spouse, your number one. Who's who's your number one? And I think that learning how to do that is not easy, but it's so worthwhile. And uh, this podcast is going to be Kim and Kim and I talking to other couples, other successful couples at varying stages of relationships and ask them what their secret sauce is and how are they doing it and how have they met the challenges that we all face and that we all experience and what have they done to, to overcome them in their own experience and then talk about what works. 
Absolutely. I mean, I think the bottom line is give your best to your spouse every day. Is it hard work? Yes. But anything that's worth doing takes work, commitment, time, focus. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. You, you have to. And it's an acquired skill. I think when you get married, you're kind of you're you're in awe, you're infatuated, you're looking at this beautiful person and you're excited about all the wonderful things that are going to happen. But you don't get a handbook. And then once you're married, you're not really sure what to do and how to do it or where you're supposed to go or what's next. And unfortunately, I, I think you would agree with this, Kim. I want to hear what you say as well. But life catches up to you, whether it's your work or your growing family, your kids. And there's a lot of things that want to steal and kind of capture and take your time. And it takes you, you take your eye off the ball, so to speak. And your spouse is no longer your number one priority or number one focus. And, you know, what 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 do you think happens in the marriage when that happens? Well, I think often we give our spouse the leftovers and um, that's a bad habit um, and pattern to get into. It's so important that we bring our best to our spouse uh, every opportunity that we get. And I know we're bogged down by work and kids and there's so many things that are at us all day long and sort of chip away at us, right? So when we get home, um, the last thing we do want to do is put our energy and our focus and, and, and time into our marriage. But I really believe that when we do, when we're cognizant of that and we're proactively working on our relationship, um, it just makes everything else outside of that better. Absolutely. A concept that you're going to reminds me, Kim, we we talked about the whole idea and I don't think I necessarily coined this, but I love it, is spillover thinking. And really one of the major reasons or focuses or points about uh, this podcast and everything that we're doing together is that concept of spillover thinking that if I my number one job, if I had to simplify what it means uh, to be a kick ass husband or a kick ass spouse, I would say I want to pour so much into my spouse, so much good, so much love care, concern that my spouse can't contain it. And all that good is just bubbling up and bubbling over and it's spilling over to everybody that she comes into contact with. And if if I'm doing that for her and she's doing that for me, it's going to bless and promote and help and lift up everybody we come into contact with. W would you agree with that? Absolutely. It's infectious when you are pouring into me and I know you've got my back and I can feel that you're um, just giving me what I need in, in, in moments during the, throughout the day. When you're doing that for me, it definitely spills over and pours into everything else I'm doing. I'm joy filled. I'm happy. I know you've got my back. And um, it just makes me a better person. When it comes to creating a kick-ass marriage, do you ever wonder how you're doing? We found that there are 13 key components that make up a thriving relationship, which is why we've created the Kick-Ass Assessment. In this powerful free tool, you'll learn what they are and how you and your spouse are ranking in each one. And you'll get recommendations that will help you start improving today. To get your results, simply visit MatthewEHoffman.com. Again, that's MatthewEHoffman.com. It's time to start kicking ass. Let's go. So, Kim, if someone were to ask you, why are you and Matthew doing this podcast? What, what's the reason that you think you and I, how would you describe that to someone? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why is it important to us? Well, I think you already said that. I mean, you you hit the the nail right on the head when you said that we believe all couples are um, deserving of having an extraordinary and fulfilling uh, relationship. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think, you know, who is this for? If you want to know if this podcast is for you, if you're an imperfect couple and you want to level up, you want to get better, then this is for you. You know, we even though Kim and I both think we're we're a kick ass couple. And we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. Uh, I, I know I have feet of clay and I make mistakes every single day and I fall short and I get upset and I maybe don't meet the expectation of what I think I should be doing. 
But I, I think that everybody has an opportunity, as Kim was saying, to get an extraordinary relationship. And Kim and I are passionate about our desire to help other people experience a relationship as good as it can be. Absolutely. I think we're most excited about walking alongside of all of you, um, learning and growing together as we explore relationships and as we hear from people uh, who have been successful in their relationships, who have um, been through all different um, stages in life in relationships. I think there's a lot of value to be learned from from those people. And I'm really excited about that. I am too. I think it's going to be so much fun for us to explore and talk to people that have been married for years and years, to people that have just gotten married, and even to maybe some couples who aren't married yet, but they're committed to each other. And they're thinking that marriage might be around the corner because there's such great, valuable lessons that we can learn from all those stages and all those people. And I'm most excited because I know that you and I are going to learn a lot from the people that we're talking to and sharing uh, all that goodness. And one of the things that we're going to do that Kim and I are going to talk to these people in order for us to get a good perspective, you're going to hear us talking to these couples about where they came from. And in order for us to understand where they are now in their relationship, we're going to talk about their family of origin and what did love look like for them growing up? What did they see their parents or parents or grandparents or whoever their primary caregivers ex ex explain and explore? What did they see demonstrated? Because it's really important because that's what they brought to the marriage, to the relationship. And one of the toughest things to handle is two people's history and origin coming together and forming that one bond in a new marriage. Yes, I, I think it's important that we share with you that we're we're not counselors. We're not marriage counselors. We have no licenses to do this. However, we have experience um, and we're excited to talk to other couples and um, bring to you what they've done, what we've done, uh, learn from each other and share. I, I, I believe that there's a lot of um, a lot of good and a, a lot of information and a, a lot can be learned from that. Absolutely, Kim. And it's going to be you can expect to hear from other couples what worked for them, what didn't work for them, what their biggest challenges or successes or failures. It seems I don't know why. I don't know who said it, but we seem to learn more from our failures than our successes, <laughs> maybe because they're a little sharper and tougher for us to go through. And we're going to kind of be pulling back the curtain on people's relationships and having them share what they went through and how they handle it and hope that we can give some of those pearls to you. And this podcast is actually going to be the first part of the Kick-Ass Couples Nation. This is our foray into this together. Kim and I will be working on this podcast together. Um, a few months after this gets going, you're going to be seeing Kick-Ass Couples Nation, which is our membership site. That's going to be coming out. And that membership site is for couples to give them the tools and the resources to help them level up and get stronger in their relationships. And then you're going to hear us talk about uh, my book that's coming out, The Kick-Ass Husband, Winning at Life, Marriage and Sex. And that's 52 small digestible chapters, easy to talk about, where I share some of the successes and what I've learned over my 26 years of marriage as a husband and what it's going to take for me, for you to be success successful, what it will take for you to be successful in that relationship. And this beautiful lady sitting right next to me is the subject of that book. And so it's kind of like a, a learning lab of experiences that you get to share some of my tips, tricks, insights. And then my co-author in that book, Chris Cambus, who is a licensed marriage therapist, talks about why it's important to do those things and what happens if you don't and kind of gives us uh, the counseling viewpoint of what strong couples and relationship looks like. So this podcast is kind of our intro. And Kim, if you like, if you thought about the foundation or the pillars of a relationship, what are some of the things that come to mind or what do you think is most important for a, any successful relationship? Well, I can only speak to us or and for me personally, but the 
most important thing for me is my spiritual foundation. That comes first and foremost, because that's really the core, the crux of who I am and how I, um, how I conduct myself. But after that, I would definitely have to go with the three C's. First, commitment, number one, um, and probably most important. And number two, communication number three conflict resolution so the three c's would be um i think what have made us a kick-ass couple uh, we have done those well i think it, it's only in recent years but i believe that we are really focused on those three things and have not mastered because we're definitely a work in progress and we are continuing to work on those things daily but I believe that we're getting better at it and we um, have really been committed to those three C's. I agree. I, I think that the foundation of any successful relationship or what makes it kick ass, I mean, the first of those three C's is commitment because if you don't, if both couples, if both people in a relationship, a husband and wife are not committed, both people are not committed to each other or to the relationship, it's really difficult to go any any further without that commitment. And I think you and I have done a great job of demonstrating that. And we learn every day how to how to do it better. And, and those three C's are really three pillars that we're going to talk about with all the couples that we interview and ask them how they approach it and how well they're doing at it or what are the obstacles that get in the way of them doing it successfully. And there's, we have other pillars in our platform and other things are the qualities that we'll be talking about. There's about 13 in total, but I, get, I, I agree with you. Those three C's are really the focus, the foundation of success of any relationship. And we're gonna review those and others with everybody we talk to because we wanna get a good understanding of how they do it and, and what they do. So if you had one piece of advice um, that you wish we had, when we first got married, if there's one piece of advice you could give that you wish we had back then, way back then, what would it be? Oh man, if I could look back, I, you know, I, gosh, I'd say that uh, uh, Stephen Covey has a concept called the emotional bank account. And when I think about a marriage, a relationship, it's an investment. You got to invest in that relationship. And I think it sounds so fundamental and basic, but knowing you have to do it and then learning how to do it so that every day you're putting deposits in that relationship, in that emotional bank account, because you're going to make mistakes and you're going to mess up. And anytime you make those mistakes in a relationship, you know, if you think about like a bank account, it's a withdrawal. And if you take too many withdrawals, you become overdrawn and it causes problems. But if you're pouring in and filling that other person up and making those deposits and investing in that relationship, it's going to give you the grace and the slack to really navigate those those trying times, I think, in any relationship. And so I think learning to invest would definitely be for me. I'm going to turn the tables on you and say, what would uh, if you could get one piece of advice or if you if you had one piece of advice back from when we first started our relationship, what would what would you have wished that would have been? Yeah, I think similarly, um, I didn't know that you really needed to protect and uh, preserve and nurture your relationship on a daily basis. I didn't realize that. I was very naive to um, to that fact. I think it's easy to um, in the beginning, do those things. But then as time goes on, you become very comfortable with one another. You get a little sedentary, then you start a family. And all of a sudden, you just don't do those things at all. You're not, you're not nurturing, you're not watering the garden, you're not you're not taking care of the weeds. And um, you be you get in this pattern that becomes unhealthy. And uh, I, I wish back then that I knew that I had to work on that and really focus on those things every day. You know, for example, every single day you bring me 
a cup of coffee. And with that coffee normally comes a hug or a kiss. And just in those two gestures, the coffee and the morning greeting, you have told me that you have my back, that you love me, that you've got my back today and that I'm important to you. And that's just an incredible thing to take throughout the day with you. That has meant so much to me over the years. Um, just those two little simple things have um, nurtured me and told me that you're there for me. That's a great example. I appreciate you sharing that. And it's my joy to do that and my privilege. I, I get to do that. It's not an obligation, but it's just something, one way that I've chosen to show you uh, a daily act of service, just a little, a little thing. But it's, you know, when you were talking, I heard you saying about our commitment and, and what happens over time. It's, you, you all have heard the term probably, uh, it's a slow fade. In other words, it's not, this is not something that happens overnight, but it happens, it's little adjustments over a long period of time. And I, I asked my, uh, I have a niece who's really good at math and, 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 and science. And I asked her to do a little math problem for me last summer. I said, if I was traveling from California to New York and I d took the most direct route and I measured the miles and what that distance and that, obviously that angle, it's, it's a straight line. And I said, if I'm off by one degree over just that trip of over 2000 miles, where would I end up? If I wanted to go from San Francisco to, to New York, how far, where would I end up? And she did the math and she came back and she said, you would be 40 miles off of your destination just by changing your course one degree. And that one degree are those things that you do every day. It's all the little things that add up, obviously over distance and time, and 40 miles off of your journey is not even close to the end point. And I think that what you're talking about is the, the little things all added together to make a huge difference in relationships. And we're gonna be talking about what are those little things? Some of them might be practical tips and tricks. Some of them might be conceptual ideas, concepts that are really rooted in science and human behavior. And we're gonna get into all that kind of stuff, I think, and just really have a lot of fun learning how people do it and what makes them successful. Absolutely. I'm excited to hear what other people do, what their ideas are and, and, and how they make it work. You know, I can't wait. I think I think when you, when you ever you're asked the question, who learns more, the teacher or the student? And it's we're going to learn. Uh, Kim and I are excited because we know we're going to learn from all these people in different stages of their relationships about what they're doing and and how they've done it and how they've been able to prioritize their spouse and put them number one. And um, I love the, some of you all, I'm dating myself a little bit, I know, but uh, Abbott and Costello have a comedy routine called Who's on First? And it's about a baseball uh, player and a baseball manager figuring out who's on what base. And I love that idea of who's on first because it all comes back to commitment. And who is your number one relationship? And if it's not your spouse, Therein lies so many problems that happen with couples and relationships. Absolutely. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the, the 13 pillars, which are really sort of the crux and the core of the things that we'll be discussing over the course of this podcast? Absolutely. Well, we talked about the first three that we think are kind of the core and the foundation, the three C's, commitment, communication, and conflict resolution. And the way this podcast is going to be structured is that every fifth episode, Kim and I are going to kind of do a deep dive on one of those characteristics. So we won't, it won't be an interview. It'll be the two of us talking and bringing up examples, maybe pulling something out of pop media and culture, or what's happening with us right now to emphasize the importance of that attribute or, or a piece of what happens in a relationship and what you can do to develop that relationship muscle. You know, we have 13 pillars. Um, it, you, we, we've got the three we talked about, the commitment, communication, and conflict resolution. And then we also have trust and honesty is one. 
do you want to share kim some of the some of the others sure just just real quick we can sort of run through them patience intimacy lasting love selflessness unity servant leadership faith and a moral code appreciation and security and we'll we'll have a chance to talk about those and talk about those with our guests and ask them how they're using those skills and attributes or how they're developing them or how do they manifest or show up in their relationships and so we're super excited to be getting into this and kim and i i don't know if you noticed the surroundings we're not going to give you the full tour right now but kim and i are sitting in a 1973 sovereign airstream trailer this is our podcast studio and also our camper that we travel with our young son in and uh, it has a name this airstream's name is maynard we we didn't we didn't name him that but we he came with a <laughs> name, with the name registered with airstream international so maynard is our studio and, and it's part of this introductory podcast a little later you're going to get a tour of maynard so you can see the ins and outs of this 30 foot home away from home and podcast studio where we'll have guests that'll be in here with us and we're, when we're interviewing them live and then we'll be doing our remote interviews here via zoom as well so you'll get to know that wherever we go maynard goes and you're going to get some incredible interviews and uh, you can see the aluminum and the shininess and uh, it's a little unique so we're typically in blue jeans for these interviews they're pretty casual it's an airstream interview and we really want you to come in and relax with us and have a chance to talk about the, the tools the tricks the ideas the concepts and what you can do to uh, better develop your number one relationship and and work on becoming more of a kick-ass couple yourself we've said it before and you're going to hear us say it again because happily ever after does not just happen it's on purpose so welcome to the kick-ass couples podcast let's go inside and meet maynard our 1973 fully frame off restored airstream trailer where all the magic of the kick-ass couples podcast is going to happen all right we're going to step in and you're going to get to see the studio first here we have our road mics our monitor our splitting board and this is where we interview all of our couples for the kick-ass couples podcast whether we're on the road whether those couples are live with us right here in the trailer or kimberly my co-host and i are here and we're zooming with people all around the world as we continue down, you can kind of see the luxurious kitchen that we have here in Maynard. Two burner stove for all those delicious creations we're going to make. A sink. Our convection microwave is right here. We've got our full size freezer and fridge. Our entertainment center for music and satellite when we're not recording studios. Cruising on down on the other end of the trailer, you can peek in and see our full size bathroom with our vessel sink in our shower. Now we're cruising back into the bedroom and you can see we've got a queen size bed back here, a little TV for entertainment and storage underneath. Now we'll cruise back out. Maynard, as he is registered with Airstream International is a 30 foot 1973 classic trailer. So you've just witnessed and gotten the grand tour. You saw the shots on the outside. Now you get to see what the inside of Maynard looks like for the Kick-Ass Couples podcast. That's all we've got for this episode of the Kick-Ass Couples Podcast. If you like the content of this show, you'll love Matthew's upcoming book, Kick-Ass Husband, Winning at Life, Marriage, and Sex. To receive a digital mini book of quotes and images from the book, all you have to do is rate this show and leave a review in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you tune in to listen. Then email us a screenshot of your review at podcast at kickasscouplespodcast.com and we'll get it over to you right away. Until next time, remember, happily ever after doesn't just happen, it's on purpose.